the boys. I hope everyone is well. And normally I would ask each niece what you're going to get for Christmas. But unfortunately, we can't do that. But I do hope that everyone gets what they want. Later on, Sarah will be doing our talk. But now, Lord will, will be doing his games with us. And boys, have a happy Christmas. Well, hello boys, and uh, Merry Christmas to you. So t tonight, uh, just for something a wee bit different, we're going to do an emoji quiz. We did one a few weeks ago, or maybe a couple of months ago, but we're going to do one about, uh, as you can see, the Christmas emoji quiz. So let's see how we get on. So essentially, uh, as it says there, it's going to be maybe a Christmas song or a Christmas carol or a film or something like that. All have in common that they're associated with Christmas. Okay, so here's the first one. So um, this is probably an easy one to start off with. You might want, by the way, to pause these, maybe write them down as you go along. Uh, so maybe if you want to pause, but then get a pen or pencil or something like that and obviously something to write on. Um, so the first one there you can see there are a few things that look sort of like deers. I don't know if there's any sort of deers associated with Christmas. There's something that's red and that looks, I guess, a bit like a nose. Put it all together and what do you get? Okay, so this one, this is a, a film that's associated with Christmas. And uh, I can see there we've got a family. Looks like somebody with a plane, and then there's one boy and a, and a house, and uh, I don't know, he looks a bit shocked. Not sure what's happened there, so it's a film that sort of puts all those things kind of together. Okay, and uh, there's another wee clue. There was a couple of sequels, which probably weren't as good. And also, what happened in the first one probably shouldn't have happened again, but there you go. Okay, so uh, the next one uh, is a song. Okay, so it's a Christmas song, uh, which is quite popular. So obviously there you got uh, Santa and uh, set of footprints so not sure what's going on there and uh, looks like a that could be a town or a city so um put those together okay uh, think about what song that might be okay and uh you better watch out Okay, so uh, this next one's Christmas film, one of my personal favourites. Um, so it is, so obviously it looks like possibly music, I don't know. Not sure if it's a musical or if there's something involved and, and looks there like we've got a frog and a pig. Mm, not too many films that have got maybe frogs or pigs in it, I'm not sure. And then like an old fashioned hat. Uh, so I don't know. Um, so hopefully you get that. Uh, if you put those all together. Uh, we additional clue that uh, Michael Kine was in this film as well. And if you don't know who that is, ask your mum or dad. Okay, then the next one. Uh, another Christmas film. Uh, this is a Probably a more recent one. Uh, it's an animated one. Uh, so you get a train, you get Santa, you get a bell. Put it all together. Where might the train be going? And uh, that's the film. Okay. So like I say, it's animated. And I think Tom Hanks was in it as well as an extra clue. This is a Christmas song, okay, now to give you a, it's quite a long Christmas song, um, 
you know. I guess it could last nearly a couple of weeks, but uh, what we got there, we got some sort of bird, we got a pear, I think, uh, we got a tree. So, um, yeah, that's really, that's really all you probably should need to get that. Um, but there are other things in it as well, quite a lot of other things. If you added them all up, it would come to a pretty big number. Okay. One which I can't do off the top of my head at the moment. But uh, like I say, it's a long, long song if you sing it from start to finish. Okay. That's all you're getting. Okay, so the next one, it says Christmas song. It's more of a carol, to be honest with you. So it's a, a hymn we would, we would uh, sing in church. Uh, so we've got... Uh, we get two men there. I don't necessarily think they're supposed to be twins, but uh, you know, they could be doing some sort of job. And then you get a pair of eyes. So think about what you do with your eyes. And uh, well, there's an old woolly sheep there. Um, and the last one uh, looks looks more like a time of day. It's obviously not not daytime. It, it must be nighttime. So um, when you put those all together, you could get quite a well-known hymn, okay? Uh, so if you think about it, it's nothing to do with washing socks. Okay, this one then, uh, it's a film, uh, the title of the film is not very long at all, okay? Um, so this is more kind of what happens in the film. So you see there's a person there. Mm, something looks a bit different about them. Maybe about some sort of feature in their face there, but it looks like in the film they go to a sort of city and whatever city's got that big statue in it. Um, and it looks like something to do with the father and son. Okay, so um, yeah, that's that's basically it. Probably the biggest clues is the first guy, if you have a look at him and see what's different about him, okay? Okay then, this one then, this is another, uh, this is a Christmas carol, a Christmas hymn we would sing. Um, it's maybe the best known of all of them, uh, possibly. Uh, so, uh, the, the first three sort of emojis there, you can sort of take me in the same thing. Okay. Um, there's something that's not happening there. So that means something. And then the last one obviously is a time of day that it is again. Um, so that's what it is. It's, uh, so Christmas hymn and, uh, it's, sometimes it's quite hard to sing, and it's quite high uh, at the end of each verse, but very popular still. Okay, we're nearly done. Uh, we've got one more after this. Um, this one, I think, is quite hard from the emojis that are given. Um, this is a, a song, a Christmas song. It's not a carol, but it is kind of an, an older sort of uh, Christmas song. Um, Christmas is in the title of it. Uh, it's kind of at the end of the title. Um, the first emoji, praying's not really mentioned uh, in it, uh, so uh, I'm not exactly sure why it's there. Um, but it's it's like something you would say to somebody at this time of year. You would say, you know, basically another way of saying have a good one relating to this time of year. Okay, that's probably the best clue I can give you. And then the last one, uh, this is um, this is a classic Christmas song from the 1980s. Um, and, uh, you know, it's someone your mum or dad might know about. Um, I've probably heard it. Uh, it's, it's, it's all, but it's on, you'll all have heard it, it's, it's on 
every Christmas and some other people have tried to do cover versions of it and maybe not as good. So uh, so the rewind button there, that, that obviously relates to going back into the past. So think of another name for, you know, maybe going back to a, a previous a previous Yuletide experience. Uh, the rest of it relate to the time of year. So, um, yeah, uh, I can't really say any more without, uh, I couldn't even tell you the band because that would, that would give it away. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it's one of the classics, um, you know. So I don't want to give it away. I'll give it away. That last little comment was a clue, by the way. Uh, so anyway, hopefully you've all had time to do that. Uh, you can just pause it, obviously, if you need a bit more time or, or go back and see. But uh, we'll just go over the answers now and uh, you can see how you all get on. So here's our first one. I think this is uh, fairly straightforward. Obviously, the red and the nose is a bit of a clue, and obviously those things are reindeer. So put it all together, and we get Rudolph, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Uh, he had a very shiny nose. Apparently, you can get cream for that. Uh, but there you go. Uh, so that was that one. I think that's an easy one, hopefully, for us all to start off with. On to the next one. So uh, this is a film. Some of you may not have seen this one yet, but um, it's quite well known. The, the emoji at the end is basically about a wee boy who gets left behind by his parents at home uh, at Christmas time. And then there's sort of burglars trying to come in, but he manages to outwit them. The one at the end is he, he puts some aftershave in his face and it stings. So that's the picture in his face. And it's called Home Alone. Home Alone. And again, they made a few others after that, which got worse each time. And an interesting fact or not, Donald Trump actually appeared in Home Alone too. Less is about that, the better. So this one then, uh, this one, you can probably realise it now when you see it. It's Santa Claus is coming to town. So you see Santa Claus, obviously the feet to represent him, him going, and he's going to town. Okay, so that was that one. Slightly trickier on that one. So we'll move on to the next one. Uh, so this is this is one of the all time uh, good Christmas ones. If you if you haven't seen it, it's well worth a watch. I think it's in Disney Plus. If any of you have that at the moment, um, but obviously the frog is uh, Kermit, uh, and the the pig is Miss Piggy, and that probably gets this obviously is the Muppets Christmas Carol, uh, which is um, which is a sort of uh, their version of uh, a Christmas Carol, um, the story of Scrooge, by Charles Dickens. Um, it's good, good film. Okay, I must admit, I've never actually seen this one. I've sort of seen it on and off on TV, um, but it's sort of animated. Uh, and it's about a train, I think, that's going to the North Pole to see Santa. And it's called the Polar Express. Okay. Now this one, I'm not going to uh, sing it to you because we will be here for a lot longer than even we are at the minute. But we've got the bird in that one is a partridge and the partridge is in a pear tree. Um, so the song is it's usually known as the 12 days of Christmas. So if you said partridge in a pear tree, that's fine. But uh, obviously you've got lots of things, Lords of Leaping and Five gold rings and four column birds, etc., etc. So hopefully you get that one. Okay, and if you want when we're finished, you can go and sing that to your, your folks. I'm sure they'd love to hear you sing it. Okay, so this is a this is Christmas hymn. Um, 
So the problem with the clue in this is, is the eyes. So what do we do with our eyes? We're watching. Well, it looks like they're watching sheep. Well, who watches sheep? Obviously, shepherds watch sheep. And so it's when shepherds watch their flocks by night. Okay, then this one isn't particularly clear about this, but if you look at the ears of the person on the left, obviously he's got pointy ears, and um, there's not too many people with pointy ears, uh, Vulcans and Star Trek, but this has nothing to do with Star Trek. Uh, obviously elves have pointy ears, and this elf appears to be going to New York, and looks like he's maybe trying to find his dad, and of course that is the film called Elf. That's what it's called, Elf, just Elf. Okay then, so this is a Christmas Carol, uh, probably one of the more famous ones, one you probably sing maybe more than most. The first three emojis there are sort of saying that there's not much happening, it's being, it's pretty quiet, uh, you're not speaking. So another name for being quiet, obviously is being silent and it's nighttime, so it is silent night. Now this one's very, very tricky. Okay, um, obviously it's something to do with Christmas. Uh, it's hard, it, you know. And I said it's nothing to do with praying. It's more wishing you something. So, and then it's pointing at you. So it's actually we wish you a merry Christmas. And the final one, uh, all time. Uh, classic, if you like sort of your Christmas um, songs. This is uh, by Wham, uh, George Michael uh, from the 1980s, long, long time ago. And the R is pointing to back, backwards, so it would be last, and the rest of the time is Christmas. So, again, I'm not going to sing it. Uh, but it's last Christmas and I'm sure uh, it was covered by one of those girl bands who all sound the same. I can't exactly remember which one it was, but there you go. Now, if you got all of those right, you're a genius. Um, so you may take a bow. Um, but I hope you enjoyed doing that. It was a bit of fun and killed a few minutes uh, for you there. And I'd just like to wish you all a really happy Christmas. Hope you have a wonderful time. And um, I just hope you enjoy the time. It's obviously a bit of a different Christmas, but enjoy the time with whoever you're spending it with. And take care of yourselves. And now I'm going to pass you on to Sarah, who's going to tell you about a very, very special Christmas. Bye. As you know, if we've been watching the last couple of videos, we have been looking at stories in the Bible um, about people who had jobs. Um, some of these jobs were very important jobs, um, some of these jobs um, were given by God um, and a lot of them uh, had a couple of chapters where they really talked about what these people did um, and how uh, sometimes their lives were completely changed around when Jesus came, uh, like the fishermen who left everything they did and they followed Jesus. Um, and so tonight's story is a little bit different and um, we don't hear much about this character he only has one line and it's only found in Luke and um, there is other stories in the Bible about when Jesus was born in the different Gospels but they don't mention this person or they don't give him a line anyway he's mentioned but you don't hear about him so this person tonight is the innkeeper so the innkeeper um, was basically like the hotel manager he looked after his his hotel or his inn um, and he make sure that all of his guests had a bed to sleep in um, and he rented those out so people could stay there. Um, I'm only going to tell you about one of them tonight. Um, there are many more that are mentioned in the Bible but none that have the important job this one did. So, so before Mary gave birth um, she and Joseph had to make a big journey. The emperor who was Caesar Augustus at the time ordered that a census take place, which basically means he wanted everybody in the entire empire to be counted. So that meant you had to go 
to your hometown, um, the place where you were born. Um, and everyone had to register in their hometown, which meant Mary and Joseph had a really long journey. They had to travel from Nazareth down to Bethlehem. Um, this was a very long journey. It was a long journey to walk because obviously there was no cars or buses or trains. So Mary um, was on a donkey and they made this journey down to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph were descendants in the family tree of King David, um, which is why they had to go to Bethlehem, because that was where he was from. Um, the town was full of noise and people and animals, all trying to find a place to rest, because everyone had to travel to Bethlehem to be counted. Bethlehem was quite a big city, so there were lots and lots of people who needed somewhere to stay. So all of the hotels and the inns were all completely full, and there was absolutely no room for anybody else to come. But obviously there was more people who kept coming in and kept needing a room. And this isn't like today where you can book ahead or if you're booking a hotel in somewhere you're going, you know, you have a room, you just showed up and you hoped for the best. Um, and they needed a, pl a place to stay quickly because Mary was just about to give birth and they needed somewhere warm and dry that she could give birth because there was no hospitals either. So Joseph had a very important role. He started to go around all of the hotels and all of the inns in Bethlehem and ask if there was a room to stay. Um, and all of them were giving him the same reply. They were saying, I'm sorry, we are full. We don't have any more rooms left. It was the same response at the next inn and the next inn and the next inn. All of them said, a room? No way. They don't, I hardly have space for myself to sleep tonight. Because obviously these innkeepers needed a bed to stay to. And because there was so many people and so much demand for rooms, sometimes they may have actually given away their own bed um, to get people in. And at the next keeper's house, they said, I'm really sorry, we're completely full. And Joseph and Mary were getting very desperate because they'd been to so many places and all the places had said no. So Joseph pleaded with his innkeeper and said, please, my wife's about to give birth. I need somewhere for her to stay. The innkeeper again said, no, I'm sorry, I don't have any rooms, but I do have a stable out the back. It's where we keep our animals. So if you can imagine, this stable is probably like a shed that you see on a farm with sheep and cows and chickens and goats and lots of different animals. And you can imagine the smell of all those animals there. So it's not exactly nice, but it is somewhere warm and dry and um, they could have stayed. So Joseph and Mary took him up on this offer and they stayed in the stable out the back. So the innkeeper led them down this little path to the stable um, and he said, at least it's dry and there's a roof over your head and it's better than being outside. So Mary and Joseph made the best of it and tried to get as comfortable as they could, which is pretty hard considering it was in a stable. Um, but they had a roof over their heads and there was straw on the ground um, and they decided to use an animal's trough um, where they had food um, as a place for the baby to stay. So they put some straw or some hay in it to make it nice and comfortable because obviously they didn't have a cot or a pram or anything for the baby either. So that night Mary gave birth to a baby boy and she wrapped him in foes and she placed him in the manger just as the angel had told them to do and they also called his name Jesus. So when you are celebrating Christmas over the next couple of weeks um, remember Mary and Joseph um, and all they did uh, when they went to Bethlehem to uh, give birth to the baby Jesus um, and remember as well when you receive your presents um, and you get gifts from other people that you remember the greatest gift was Jesus being born at Christmas so let's pray dear Jesus we know that we are very blessed today with everything that you give us for spending time with our family at Christmas, for our Christmas dinner we will eat in a few weeks, and for opening presents. But we know that there are many people around the world who don't have these things. We also remember Mary and Joseph who didn't have anything when they arrived in Bethlehem, but you gave them um, the stable and the innkeeper who offered them a place to stay. Please help us to remember these lessons at Christmas and help us to bless others too. In your name we pray. Amen. We hope you all have a really, really good Christmas and a happy new year as you spend time with your family. And maybe it's not the same as your Christmases um, in the past, but we'll just have to make do 
with the best we can. So stay safe and, and enjoy your Christmas. Thank you.